We're asked to solve the system of differential equations x1 prime equals x2 and x2 prime equals x1 using the eigenvalue method. The first step is to write the system as the vector equation x prime equals p times x, which I've done here on the right. Notice how matrix P is a two by two matrix with entries zero, one in the first row, and one, zero in the second row. And now to use the eigenvalue method, the first step is to determine the eigenvalues of matrix P. To do this, we set up the equation, the determinant of the difference of P and lambda I equals zero, and then solve for lambda. So here's the setup. Again, we have the determinant of matrix P minus lambda times the two by two identity matrix equals zero, Simplifying inside the parentheses, the result is a determinant of the two by two matrix, where in the first row we have negative lambda and one, in the second row we have one and negative lambda. And now we evaluate the determinant. The determinant is equal to negative lambda times negative lambda minus one times one, which gives us lambda squared minus one equals zero. Solving for lambda, we add one to both sides, take the square root of both sides of the equation, and get lambda equals plus or minus one. So now we have the eigenvalues. We have lambda sub one equals negative one, and lambda sub two equals positive one. Step two is to find corresponding eigenvectors for each eigenvalue. We do this by setting up the equation, the difference of p and lambda i times vector v equals a zero vector, and then solve for a vector v, which will give us a corresponding eigenvector. We need to do this for lambda sub one and lambda sub two. Let's work on this on the next slide. Here's a setup for lambda sub one equals negative one. Again, we have the difference of matrix P and lambda times the two by two identity matrix. All of this times vector V equals a zero vector. Simplifying inside the parentheses, the result is the two by two matrix with entries all equal to one. This is a dependent system or a system that has an infinite number of solutions. One way to solve this would be to write the corresponding augmented matrix and write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Notice we have a row of zeros indicating we have an infinite number of solutions. Row one indicates that V1 plus V2 equals zero, or V1 equals negative V2, and V2 is a free variable. So if we let V2 equal negative one, notice V1 is positive one, giving us the corresponding eigenvector, the vector V1, which is the vector one, negative one. And now we do the same setup with lambda sub two equals positive one. Again, simplifying inside the parentheses, we have the two by two matrix where in the first row we have negative one, one. In the second row we have one, negative one. And again, times vector V equals a zero vector. And then we have the corresponding augmented matrix and then the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Again, we have a row of zeros where one indicates that V1 minus V2 equals zero or V1 equals V2. Again, V2 is a free variable. We can let V1 and V2 both equal one, which gives us a corresponding eigenvector V2 of the vector one, one. Now that we have the eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors, we can determine the general solution. The general solution will be X of T equals C1 times the vector V1 times E to the power of lambda sub one T plus C2 times the vector V2 times E to the power of lambda sub two T. And therefore the general solution is X of T equals C1 times the vector of one negative one times E to the power of negative T plus C2 times the vector one one times E to the power of T. And here's the corresponding fundamental matrix solution. We have X of T equals the two by two matrix with entries E to the negative T and E to the T in the first row and negative E to the negative T and E to the T in the second row times the vector C1, C2. I hope you found this helpful.